And this is getting, this is close to a civil information war. When you have, what is the equivalent to the United States president, prime minister of Canada? It's a silly place. It's inconsequential, <laughs> generally speaking, oh, yeah. in comparison. Okay, we love our Canadian brethren. But you have the prime minister of the country speaking out and saying that there are certain views which are impermissible and shouldn't be allowed to be spoken or written. These are the people who are ironically called liberals, and these are the people trying to shut down really the only peaceful mass protest that I can think of of the last half decade. There hasn't even been an injury in these Canadian protests. This has been admitted, by the way, by their own police force. They said, no, it could have, uh, there could have been a really bad uh, you know, injury or something, but did it happen? No, they just put a Canadian flag on Terry Fox and then cleaned it up. Oh, all right, so peaceably assembling? I wouldn't go that far. What would you call it? Oh, scary. <laughs> So remember, Trudeau called unvaccinated Canadians uh, and now these trucker convoys, and we have B.J. Dichter here who's on the ground to discuss it, uh, racists, fascists, sexists, and said that they hold unacceptable views in case you've forgotten. Here he is. Mais il y a aussi des gens qui sont farouchement opposés à la vaccination. Ils sont extrémistes. Qui ne croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, qui sont souvent racistes aussi. C'est un, 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 un petit groupe, mais qui prend de la place. Et là, il faut faire un choix en tant que leader, en tant que pays. Est-ce qu'on est qu tolère ça? Small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing. Done. Tyrant. Do not represent the views of Canadians. Don't even want to hear the rest. Unacceptable views. Done. Tyrant. Period. That's it. You've crossed the line. That's it. No leader of an allegedly free country gets to determine what is an unacceptable view outside of actual violent crime, of course. I need to right. say that. Done. That's it. You're a tyrant. He needs to be out. Mm -hmm. uh, he also wrote this uh, on Tuesday, tweeting, uh, Today in the House, members of Parliament unanimously condemned the anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-black racism, homophobia, and transphobia that we've seen on display in Ottawa over the past number of days. Oh. This written by a guy who's a blackface connoisseur. Well, it just so happens <laughs> that we actually have one of these sexist, transphobic, racist truckers live on the show right now. All right. How are you doing, Stephen? I am doing well. I can't see you yet. Hold on one second. Uh, Tim, the tool man, is going to bring you up. Uh, for people who are watching, you can find him on the Twitter at BJ Dichter. He's uh, one of the spokespeople for the, uh, the truckers right now, the Freedom Convoy. He joined in late January. And uh, by the way, uh, PolitiFact says there's only in the hundreds to low thousands of protesters. We just heard that from the prime minister. I've heard numbers as high as 50,000. Mr. Dichter, thank you for being here. Can you clarify that for us? Well, I would never uh, accuse the left of being terribly good at math okay. or finances or anything like that. So uh, it's thousands. We, we have no idea. It's been, you know, two weeks now, and we're still trying to aggregate data, see where certain teams are. People are on farmers' fields all over the country, and they're not uh, – we can't get, like, a detailed uh, account. We will eventually, but it's, it's literally thousands. Oh, it's and, you know, Stephen, I just – I just want to comment on what you said before. Uh -oh. um, you know, you have a movement right now where the two spokespersons are a Métis woman and a Jew. But blackface is the tolerant one. That's the town world that we live in. Well, no, no, no. Hold on a second. I have to fact check you. By the way, if you could tilt the camera up a little bit. You have a wonderful <laughs> clavicle and beard. But I do. There you go. I want to see the face. <laughs> um, he's not just blackface. He was a black body. He did his arms. He did his legs. Like, <laughs> I don't think right. I've ever seen anyone love. I wish I loved anything as much as Prime Minister Trudeau loved black I remember the banana. Face. Yeah. Remember the banana he put in his pants? Like, what the hell, man? And he sang it's the banana crazy. song. Dale, Dale. I mean, it couldn't be any worse for crying out loud. Um, now, before we move on. What was that? When was this? Trudeau? Yeah. Oh, he did it like a million times. Ugh. We'll show you yeah, a highlight. He lost track. He doesn't know how many times he did it. No, but same with blackface. Yeah, I have to count yeah. his, his number of blackfaces. I have to use an abacus. <laughs> you count them with bananas. Yes, exactly. And then it's like Donkey Kong, mm. where you just do that level where you leave and go right back and you get the banana horde. That's how many times he did blackface. But let me ask you this. Hey, uh, PJ, you felt you were late today because you fell in a in a ditch, I understand, and we saw videos of people putting nails on the road yesterday. Is that what happened? Did you Mad Max? You got nails on your tires? 
you know, maybe that's what I'll tell my insurance company. No, it's, uh, you remember how warm Canada is in the winter? Yes. Well, it's one of those days where it's a sheet of ice and just, you know, the tail end slipped out. And the next thing I knew, I've never had that before in my life. Next thing you know, I was in a ditch in a tree. So, uh, we're off to a rock and start at the convoy today. It's only going to get better from here, right? Well, right. Well, you were going to call us in front of Parliament. Where are you right now? It looks like you're at a, at a truck stop. Or a bingo hall. I, I, I'm in Canada. Where else would I be? Oh, if good I'm point. In Canada, other than Tim Hortons, right? <laughs> in a place that has no Uber, no rental cars. Uh, I don't have cellular signal. I, I don't know where I am. But I do have some people from the convoy going to rescue me. Oh, okay. Well, that's wonderful. Those, uh, you know, I mean, racist, xenophobic Nazis uh, <laughs> helping. Oh, you, you should see what the uh, fake news media is doing to me because I got up on the stage in front of, I don't know, 30, 40, 50,000 people last week. And I gave concrete examples of what I call the fake news CBC. And I explained that last week they were running a series of stories that our GoFundMe was frozen from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And I told my team, don't say anything. Don't correct them. I want to bait them. So they went the entire week reporting, oh, it was for nefarious reasons or or racist or whatever, phobe, whatever. But what was happening is we were just sharing paperwork back and forth. And it takes, you know, GoFundMe is not the fastest when you set up a campaign. Right. Usually takes seven seven to ten days. I know that's exactly what we were dealing with. So once it was approved, it was, uh, everything started, it was fine. And we we ran out, ran a presser that, you know, uh, all the fake news that you've been reading has been fake, and GoFundMe uh, has started relinquishing, uh, releasing the funds. That was until two days ago. I believe it was uh, mainstream media people who were brigading the account and trying to, re- to mass report as many as it, which triggers the algorithm. Right. And now we're going back and forth with GoFundMe again. But at least now we got a team of lawyers who flew in, so it's not going to be advantageous for GoFundMe to continue. Can you freeze it? Well, that'll be fun. It's just going to cost us some money. Whatever. whatever. That'll be fun, yeah, too, because yeah. your lawyers in yeah. Canada all have to pay for those silly wigs. <laughs> They'll show up with their judges. Rose <laughs> People don't realize here how it works. But let me ask, let me ask you this. Um, well, first yeah. off, let me comment. I always tell Americans they don't fully understand when they bitch about corporate media. You just touched on CBC. Americans yeah. don't know that's the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The alternative is CBC, and that is government-run media. So you have government-run media putting pressure on a private organization, GoFundMe, to stop the funds for what? A mass uprising, a mass peaceful uprising protesting the government. Think of that. Protest the government. Government media says, GoFundMe, you better freeze these funds. What, what is it up to, by the way? How much have you guys raised in GoFundMe? It's many, many millions. Uh, last, last I checked, it was 10100000 oh. and that's when they put the hard stop on it. So we can't uh, receive any more funds. So I actually put a post out yesterday saying, uh, should we actually start collecting funds with Bitcoin by any chance? And boom, people started uh, sending me wallets saying, we've been collecting for you in Bitcoin already. And the, the last wallet I saw, I got to confirm it today, but it had something like $46,000 in Bitcoin already. Wow. So, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, right? Yeah, but you're going to have to deal with the pain in the ass, all the, all the uh, crypto people. So, you should really be doing yeah. Ethereum. It's like, shut up! All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just they're going to be warring with each other. And there's one person like, oh, yeah. I'll mine some more. Can you t- tell people here in the United States? Because they yeah. see bits and pieces out of context. Um, okay. What is this about? I mean, it's obviously about protesting the vaccine mandate, but what is going on right now in Canada? You know, I was raised there from three to 18, never experienced anything like this, which is going on, and I'm proud to see it. What do Americans need to know if they're just tuning in right now and they go, what's going on with Canada, truckers, something? Explain to them. Okay, so the first, we're we're protesting the vaccine mandate and the vaccine passport. So what is the vaccine passport? That means anytime you come into Canada, you're going to have to have this app downloaded into your phone and it will uh, track the status of your COVID shots. So if you need more shots and you don't get them, then you, f- you, you don't pass. You have to go back to the United States as a trucker and you have to get a PCR test and wait whatever the period of time is and then come back. But the other thing is this affects you guys as well because the Biden administration is implementing the same thing. Right. However, we know from our friends within politics and, and journalism, apparently the Biden administration, even the Biden administration had zero interest in this. But the Trudeau government apparently lobbied the Biden administration and convinced them to adopt a similar process. We don't know why, 
We don't know if they're going to be sharing data across the border with people going into the U.S. and vice versa. Yes. But this is the basis of social credit. And I explained when I was on Tucker Carlson, the first time I used it, I drove up to the, the booth and I held up my, my passport. And the guy says to me, oh, no, I don't need to see it. I'm like, well, you don't need to see it. He said, well, when your truck drives up and it's within a certain vicinity of the border, all your details and information comes up on my computer so and it's correlated with your passport so i can already see it you don't have to show it to me great so when are we going to start implementing that across every city in canada and then ultimately the united states like this is crazy draconian stuff yeah that's also tough for the booth operator because he's like "Ah, i gotta close all my windows of porn new truck (laughs) came up um well now let me ask did you have you had a question about to ask there gerald hold on gerald is here hold on he has to ask it we we have so many questions right i appreciate you making the time i mean especially considering that you just had airbags going off in your right yeah exactly (laughs) just proving that it's hard to drive on ice thank you for making that point for me from (laughs) from yesterday but how how long uh how long do you guys plan on staying i know right now that there's been some i I know that the police were saying that they were going to break stuff up and ask people to leave or force people to leave or give tickets or tow like what's the status of how many people are there right now as far as trucks and how long they intend on staying i don't know 2022 2020 sorry 2024 maybe (laughs) until things change the thing is is going around and building this narrative you know white supremacist and a confederate flag it's canada we don't have i I know i was just saying i was like you know unless someone actually zoomed in on the english flag and distorted it and like yeah it kind of looks like a confederate flag i guess they're union jack but yeah i I saw it and immediately knew that it was a bad actor it's fairly north well the the guy was wearing a black balaclava and i am automatically assumed oh it's justin trudeau it's gotta be (laughs) especially because he was going yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so the, the thing is, what we have some people on our command team. Like we have a central command, and we have ex-military and ex-police police officers there. So they know all the protocols of crowd control, making it safe, having emergency vehicle pathways, and in back and forth with the police over the past week, week and a half, they understand that as disorganized because it just blew up and went parabolic they understand that we're spending all of our time keeping everybody's morale up making it the biggest block party in uh, in, in canada's history otherwise known as hashtag trudeau's truck stop right right in front of his <laughs> office and it's a party atmosphere it's great it's it's so much fun well i, would, I wouldn't use the term block party because there's some members in quebec who are like hey don't steal our name <laughs> 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 exactly. No, but Stephen, Stephen, you'll, you'll understand this, and you explain this to the audience. When I first got there the first day, before everything started, so the pre-day, there were, I couldn't believe this, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, maybe, walking across the border from Quebec into Ottawa with Quebec flags and Ontario flags, and we saw them all, um, going to meet up with you know people truckers from alberta and saskatchewan and regina and whatever and they were all just hanging out yeah they couldn't speak to each other right. it was funny they're trying to figure out how to speak english how to speak french but they're hugging each other they're hanging out and this is what happens when the media and uh, our politicians get out of the way you know what people actually can unify it was the most beautiful experience i've ever seen in all my time of, of in canada it's like as though the Gavin Newsom Californians went to like Mississippi and decided to you know hold hands and unify together. It was, it was amazing. Well, you know what? I have a, still a lot of French Canadian family, and a lot of people don't realize that Northern yeah. Quebecers, you know, once you go out of Montreal, they tend oh, to be yeah. pretty conservative. Yeah. Even the old separatists, a lot of it was based on some conservative ideas. They just sort of got it wrong. They thought that they were not being fairly represented in the taxation. But a lot of them, you know, they're hunters up there. I mean, I have an uncle mm-hmm. who hunts caribou. And uh, they have they actually became big Trump huh? fans. Think about that. Raymond Massé, who was like, man, uh, I like Trump. Uh, Carlos, that man, uh, he's, uh, he's a man, you know. And I was like, man, these French Canadians, they really have changed. And here's one thing I want to point out. And I want to get back to, um, because we have a big portion of our audience that's Canadian, and I'd like you to tell us how we can yeah. help mobilize them too. But Americans don't fully understand this. You know, when they say, oh, big tech, it's not censorship because it's not government. Look, for uh, a place... 
a place where we live, the United States, it's really pretty bad and it's getting scary that they have these gatekeepers online. You know, you see Spotify and Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but at least, even you just mentioned Tucker Carlson, there are still options, even in traditional media outlets. In a place like Canada, where people can exaggerate that and take a place like Venezuela, where your only source of news, when I was there, I know now you have like rebel news, things like that, but your only source of news is government funded. The government telling big tech platforms who to remove is catastrophic, and there can be no uh, protest. There can no longer be any civil disobedience. I, I don't think Americans realize it can all go away if the internet becomes um, this sort of this sort of authoritarian wasteland that we see Saki and Joe Biden want. Well, I think what's happening here is in terms of the fake news media, so CBC, Toronto Star. When we had our first press conference, <laughs> I went on to Twitter, and George Peterson put up that that graphic that the Toronto Star published. And, you know, the CBC was publishing fake news articles about us all week. So I went on to Twitter and I said, all right, first press conference. CBC and the Toronto Star are banned from our first co conference. And we've bring, been bringing in all these, you know, independent creators, social media people um, who are, you know, young, uh, independent journalists. A couple people, one from the National Post and, you know, True North and Epoch Times. But the rest of them were all independent creators. And I said to them, we sat down. And I said, look, we're not going to have the CBC come in with their giant, you know, um, phallic camera that's 30 feet tall yes. and 50 people and take up all the, the uh, floor space. This is for you guys. We'll be here as long as you want. Two hours, three hours. I don't care. You ask us anything. Let's have a dialogue and a conversation. And Andrew Lawton from uh, True North Center, who's a, he's a fantastic journalist. I, I know Very Andrew. I met him about six years ago. Yeah. Oh, you froze him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He it we, is Canada. Yeah, I was going to say he's literally frozen <laughs> as well. His uh his digital assets as well as his asset. Well, they're all frozen. His potatoes. Let's see if we need to call him uh let's see if we need to hang up and call him back because I want to tell people also too who are watching here uh in the United States and ask him about this. Again, uh, this is how important it is to have an open and free internet as far as, and I don't just mean this as far as net neutrality and bandwidth. I'm talking about people being able to have a dialogue yeah. because that's how truth can get out. That's why you don't want to keep, let's say, Maduro on Twitter and get rid of a Donald Trump right. or get rid of a convoy because what you end up with is, there are a few videos going around with, uh, with this right now, and I want to show a clip. Um, remember the Australia-style COVID camps? Yeah. Uh, they're seeing these being set up in places like British Columbia and Canada, here's someone who actually filmed it. And of course, you don't see it on the uh, Canadian funded government right. broadcast here. All right, so I've gone on a little trip and I'm in the middle, almost geographically the middle of British Columbia, um, just west of Vanderhoof. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I came across this, I'm like, what the hell? There's it's like a jail in the middle of nowhere. So if you don't believe it, wake the f up. Oh. <laughs> so who are these for? Who are all these camps for? And why is there electric fences? Electric fence and barbed wire. It's a freaking prison. Hmm. That is absolutely terrifying. I think we lost BJ uh, Dictor, oh. but you know what? The, the guy already gave us enough time, and we're running late as it is. Uh, people, you can follow him at BJ Dictor. We'll have the information for the – if it's the GoFundMe or right, Bitcoin, right. whatever it is, we're going to make sure that we have it available. Link in the description where you guys can go and support them. Almost 10% of our audience is Canadian. Yeah. So uh, we'll also be talking about this more. This is, this is something that hopefully ends up being mirrored in the United States. And isn't it insane when you just think of how the media here – and Trudeau, he said, for example, I'll meet with people who I agree with. Black Lives Matter was an excellent <laughs> example of this. That's not how, that's not how democracy works. That's no. not how a constitutional republic works. The whole point is to have conversations with people you disagree. And by the way, right. especially if they're peaceful. So you were kneeling for people who were violent. And by people, I mean some, but certainly more than zero, which is what you're seeing from this convoy, right. zero yeah. acts of violence whatsoever but you don't, you don't meet with these folks. And all these folks are asking is that you don't force upon them a digital coding software, that you don't spy on them. The other activists are demanding that you, uh, you know, 
I mean, depending which country you're in, destroy the nuclear family, yeah. reparations, reallocate resources from white businesses to black businesses. You know, simple stuff, racist stuff. These people are saying, just don't stick a needle in us and make us have to have a digital passport, eh? And if you have to, just don't make the numbers six and then six and another six. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair that's an easy ask i mean go with sevens that that's about the all right well look we're, uh i guess we'll tease it out this has been uh, bj dichter and we'll we'll have him on again next week yeah there we go watch louder with crowder live monday through thursday 10 a.m eastern